in three, two, one. Welcome back to the most professional show on the planet. Joined today by my fellow co-host, Jim, and our special guest, Sino. Or I might have gotten that wrong. What's going on, Jim? How are you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good. Hey, flawless start we're having to this show. We are a okay. We are perfect. <laughs> way. We are super professional. We totally did not start this off muted with you guys. But how are you doing? How's it going, Drew? Did, didn't you even start the actual episode with, yep, yeah, we're super professional. Yes, I did. Yeah. Good job. Good. I'm. I, I I could be good. I, I no, I could be good. I could be better. I could be worse. You know. Mm -hmm. Going back to you know, it's, it's relevant. It's what it is. It's what it is. It's just like this podcast. It could be better. It could be worse. Probably on more on the better side of things. It could be muted. Yeah, we could have also. <laughs> it could also be muted today. Um. Yeah, today we're being joined by uh by Big Jim. Welcome, dude. Uh, Hello. How would we describe Jim? I would say a, an amazing Twitch streamer. Um, I got to know him through the Warframe partnership, Warframe directory. Uh, doing other stuff now. Um, doing other... Working at Lutz. Can I talk about that? Sure. Doing 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 amazing things with Lutz, which is like a great thing that helps streamers as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing a great introduction. <laughs> Do I, did I forget something? Do you want to add something to it? No, that's good. Awesome. You're all good. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out how to work free cameras, but we'll we'll work about that. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna we're gonna have a little uh, our very first guest framecast. We're gonna be talking about a couple of things. Um, we were talking while the mics were muted about the uh, the content coming up in Warframe, and Drew said that there was something on the dev stream about some content maybe coming up or so. So I can't remember if they said this the last time, but they're they're mm -hmm. planning on bringing out the Kuva liches uh, as of the the next patch, which is just like, ooh, nice. um, I like it. Kind of makes me wonder though what is coming in Empyrean mm -hmm. if the uh, the Kuva liches are being slightly separated. Um, mm -hmm. What else have we got? Um, the they showed off the new hydroid deluxe which looked pretty damn awesome um and they're hoping that the rework will come this week so i know the main line will come this week or maybe mm -hmm. next week so i, I got rework because ember and barban rework is going to be in there as well right yeah that that was the news it was uh main line should include almost everything they showed is what I remember, and then, like you said, which is the the deluxe skin, and then the reworks of Ember and and Vobin, which makes me happy because mm -hmm. like Ember was like she was my main on Xbox. Like when I first started streaming, I was just like Ember, I could just world on fire, r run through the map, and talk with chat. Like I didn't even have to pay attention to the game. It was great. And then uh, I've always I've always liked Vobin, so I'm I'm a little excited to get my hands on that. Oh, uh, um, I just heard something. So, um. Xeno, are you still happy with Jim as a guest on this podcast? Now that you know that he loves Ember and you absolutely hate Ember. <laughs> I heard Boobin. Did wait, no, but, genuinely yeah. I heard Boobin. I did you not say you like Vauban? I do, I like Bauban. Yeah. He's uh he's one of my top favorite frames of all time. I didn't but, hear But he also about said that he Ember. mained Ember. <laughs> I used to main Ember. Did you? Yeah, he yeah, used to. First... He, he realized yeah. his mistake. He got yeah. better. He got help. Yeah. When I was uh, when I was a Warframe wee lad, yeah, <laughs> new to the game, Ember, press four, you win game. Press Felt four, good. press four to win. But um, our reworks <laughs> looks it looks actually pretty good. Um, I'm excited to try it. Um, hoping that the armor stripping abilities will be so good that Casino has to forfeit Oberon and make Ember his favorite. No. No. Really not. Not gonna happen. No. We don't know the stats yet. But anyway, um, no. So... <laughs> we were having some really interesting discussions right before we were getting the podcast started. I completely forgot them by this point. So, Drew, do you remember any of them? So, what were we talking about? I was reading chat. <laughs> we were talking about some really cool things at the start of that like, before we got started, and me being the super great host that we are, 
um, completely forgot about them, even though we were touching on so many interesting things that we were almost doing the podcast by itself. Well, let, let's do what we're planning on doing and let's touch on Jim. Yeah, let's touch yes. him very, very intimately. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jim, like, tell us about how you got to the whole Twitch scene. Like, where did oh. it all start and everything? Because, like, uh, you know, we all hear the stories from, like, the amazing Mugamu and people like that. But, like, tell us, where did you start? Mine was actually terrible. So, like, <clears throat> mine is, like, so whenever, okay, uh, here, okay, here we go. So whenever people ask, like people stop into a, to, to a show or, you know, tune into a stream and they're all like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting into streaming. Do you have any tips or pointers or I'm new to streaming? What would you suggest? My, my answer is always like, well, I do have some tips, but don't do what I did because I did it wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I started streaming in nightmare hardcore mode one death you know like one death equals game over mode like so when i started streaming the way i got into it i was like hey there's this stream thing that i saw my my roommate show me on this twitch website and i watched a few times i'm like okay yeah um you know watched and, and i was enjoying shows i was uh who who was who was my favorites i was at the time i was watching uh professor broman King mm -hmm. of Thalion, uh, I'm a cutie pie, Night Blue three, and there was one other streamer. There was like a total of five. Oh, it was Duck Sauce, of course. How could I forget? <laughs> I watched the hell out of Duck Sauce. <laughs> um, anyways, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can stream. So I was like, well, I play video games all the time. I might as well just start streaming. That's a mistake. <laughs> so like, I wasn't really part of any communities. You know what I mean? Like that, that whole concept was, was foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So like, I just started streaming just by turning on, just turned on the, the Xbox one day. Cause I went direct Xbox to, to Twitch. So there was no webcam. I was using the, the headset <laughs> microphone. So it probably sounded really, really good. And, uh, and then, yeah, I just talked to myself while playing Warframe. And then one day someone showed up and talked back and I was like, Whoa, How's it going, dude? And then another one showed up, and I was like, "Whoa, this is great!" And then uh, from there, but but uh, yeah, the reason I say I did it wrong is because you know if if you're if you're an active viewer on Twitch and you're hanging out um, and being part of communities, like it's much easier to get a start, especially when people know you and you're friends with a lot of people, and then you're like, "Hey, I started streaming," and then everybody's like, "What?" Like everybody's really excited for you, like. So it's it's you make it harder for yourself if you just show up and nobody knows you're there. <laughs> so like, why why Twitch over something like YouTube or I assume there's other platforms. YouTube was a video site back then to me, and I didn't know about any others. And there was a Twitch app built right into the Xbox, so it, you were able just to do a couple little settings and then go live direct from the console. So that's, that's why it was Twitch for me. Okay. So, yeah, I guess it was the restriction of being direct on console. And this was well before Microsoft bought Veeam and before it became Mixer. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember you were one of the very first um, that I knew that tried to do the Beam thing when Beam was like this brand new streaming platform. What was that like? Because basically you are you, you do have your community from Twitch, but you're starting all over on this brand new platform there. So yeah, back uh back when I like I said, I didn't know anything and uh I uh, I tried the the restreaming thing for a little while to so I I kept going on Twitch, uh and this was before the affiliate program or anything. Um so I was I was restreaming to Twitch and Beam and YouTube. And YouTube didn't didn't have a a live streaming market like a gaming viewership there at all like that one I, I ended quickly it was like two months with like nothing i was like okay well that one's we'll remove that um beam on the other hand was really cool because there was like zero chat delay if you're familiar with how mixer mm -hmm. works it was pretty neat and then there was like some on screen soundboards or custom things you could add um it was very similar to twitch except you know the it, it felt like a little bit quicker but 
the viewership was so low, nobody was over there. So there wasn't a Warframe community. It was like me and one other caster. <laughs> that was it. It was like, all right, I think I might still be in the, the stream team uh, he set up, but that was it. So it was like, all right, there's, there's nobody over there. So like all the, all the friends and viewers that I had were pretty much all streamers uh, mm -hmm. over on, over on beam. So I still, I still know a lot of them today, uh, which is really cool, but it wasn't, uh, and, and since, you know, back when I started, I was only Warframe. I was just, just a Warframe streamer. That was it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, you know, and then that's kind of what, what made my decision just to stick with Twitch. It's like, well, I'm Warframe and, you know, and so Warframe's all on Twitch. So I was like, all right, well, that's, mm -hmm. That was pretty much the decision. It, I think I stream or uh, multi-stream for like six months, eight months, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and in my in the in the eight months of being on of being on Beam, it was like two hundred and something followers. I was like, yeah, Warframe isn't here. <laughs> like, this, is, this is not a good place to be. Mm -hmm. So, so you were talking about that you you felt you went the wrong way about it because like you you had to like start up from the start without anyone knowing that you were actually streaming? Did you actually like tell the, like your friends or people around you that you were streaming? Have you told them by this point it's, or do they still not know? I mean, a lot of my friends know that mm -hmm. I'm streaming. Like uh, I had roommates at the time. So, and uh, yeah, they just, whatever they, they, they watch their own people. Some of them don't really get it. <laughs> uh, my family doesn't really get it. Um, so they're just like, oh, I don't understand you. As long as you're doing what makes you happy, little Jim, like that's, that's all right. Like, all right. Thanks. So, Out of interest, because cause we all have it, right? What is what is your go-to answer for like, you know, someone's asking you, so what do you do? And you're, you just want to get out of the conversation. You, you can't really say like, you know, oh, I do YouTube videos because they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to follow up with like, so what's that like? You know, what is, you know, how much money do you make? You know, what kind of stuff do you like? Whenever someone asks me, like, oh, what do you put on YouTube? And I go like, you know, video game content. It's like, you know, it just crashes. I, so I have never, ever, ever seen a content creator that has been like, oh my god, it is like, uh, th that will tell that. Everyone I hear just wants to jump out on that. Maybe Jim will be the exception now, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah, like, I'm exactly the same. I So I don't really jump out of the conversation, and I don't mind talking about it. Um, it's more uh, that I'm pretty sure they don't quite grasp it or aren't really interested. It's more of like mm -hmm. a, so what is it as like a like a rhetorical mm -hmm. question. So my answer is always, um, well, they're like, well, what's live streaming or what's Twitch? I'm like, well, <clears throat> it's a website and, and live streaming is basically like interactive TV is how I describe it to people. Like, mm -hmm. it's like watching a show, it's mostly specific to video games or podcasts. However, there's a live chat where you can like interact and talk with the hosts. Mm -hmm. And that's how I describe it. And some people are like, oh, that's really cool. Or some are like, oh, okay, neat. Yeah. <laughs> and then like move on like that's it and and so it's like i don't i'm happy to talk about it and it is it is fun and it's exciting because like a lot of people don't don't think about live streaming as being interactive tv and uh and i think it's really neat because if you were to if you were to i, I don't know like take take a news show for example right like imagine all the people watching news on like your evening news channel mm -hmm. imagine being able to like have a direct line of chat with those hosts like then people would get it right people are like oh yeah yeah i'm i watch uh you know frank uh, uh the, the only thing that i can imagine with that is that whenever they announce like that someone passes like you just see all the f's in chat um <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine like somebody checking out twitch for the first time and it's just like filled with memes they're like what is this <laughs> yeah. um, okay um another question along those lines um how do you feel about like your own content being played next to you when you're in the room? Like if people play clips of you of your Twitch stream when you're right next to them, how does that make you feel? Can you stand that? Is that something that you're comfortable with? Like because yeah, I can't. Like I'm, I gotta get out of the room. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a situation where somebody's done that though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever been in a situation where somebody's been playing my content while i'm in the room you're lucky man how do you feel about drew can you stand it 
Yeah, no, uh, no, no, I cannot. <laughs> like, whenever it comes up, I'm like, y you know, where you see like scuba divers that they sit on like the edge of the boat, they cross their arms and they're about to fall backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, I always envision myself like pushing out the window sitting on the edge and then diving backwards out the window <laughs> it's like abort 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 do not want to be here it's like it's the second story floor as well um so we've spoken about your time with twitch so how how long not exactly but roughly have you been on twitch i can tell you exactly how long i've been on how twitch. long have you exactly been on twitch <laughs> Since January 6th, 2016. It was the first week of the new year. And so it was that Monday is when I started. I was like, all right, we're going to start. I'm going to give it a year. And if it's successful, as deemed by my feelings, <laughs> then we'll continue. Feels. And if not, then I won't do it. So I was like, all right, we'll give it one year and see how it goes. So I'm not entirely sure if this is against the terms and conditions for Twitch because... Like, I have any idea, but what would be, like, the biggest thing you would want to improve on Twitch? Hmm. Like, the one one thing comes to mind uh, immediately, but I guess I've never thought about if there's anything that I would rather have more. Um, I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it then. Uh, I think discoverability. Mm -hmm. Um is a, is a big issue. Uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about it lately, or at least a couple people, you know, are talking about it. It doesn't really get brought up that much, but if you compare it with like YouTube, right? Like, there's always recommended videos. There's always something new that could potentially autoplay, um, and it's not just you know. There's there is a a trending section, but then there's also like tons of other you know recommended videos and things that that are related to what you watch based on like tags and the algorithm and things like that. And Twitch doesn't have that. The newest update kind of helped with that a little bit. And where I noticed that the, uh, the directories aren't sorted by views anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, which yeah. is I guess, a step in the right direction, but there's still no, I don't know. I, I it, it definitely needs improvement somehow. I don't, I don't have the answer for you. Like there's, there's other people that have done mm -hmm. that. Like have thought really hard and have pitched ideas on how it could be fixed. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, that would help not only, not only, you know, it would help everybody's channel, right? Not, not only mine, but mm -hmm. you know, everybody else as well. So. All right. So on the, on the topic of Warframe, because that is basically the community that you got into and you, 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 you grew bigger, um, within, um, when it comes to Warframe right now, what are you most excited for? What are you looking forward to? I've been waiting for uh, the new war for like a year and a half now. <laughs> like for me, Warframe, Warframe, you know, like my my time with Warframe has gone from wanting to play it all the time mm -hmm. and collect everything. Like I did that already. That's that's done. I, I mm -hmm. collected everything. I, I did all the stuff. Right. Like my main account was Xbox and I had everything. I, mm -hmm. As soon as MR25 came out like that week, I was MR25. Like I had everything. Right. Um, now, of course, I'm on PC and I haven't touched the Xbox account, but that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I no longer need to do everything or have every weapon or have, you know, mastered, mastery rank every weapon. For me, the game is more about like, what's, what's next in the story? Like, like, sure. The, like, I enjoy the, the summer event and the Halloween event, which isn't out yet. I don't think it should be coming out sometime soon. Um, like I enjoy the little events they do, but like Warframe, right? Like the story, like the cinematic quests, like that's, that's what it's all about. And that's kind of how my community, um, has evolved too. It's been like, uh, for like a year now, well, just over a year, I've been doing a lot more, um, story and campaign game content to like, so we can like experience those together. That's like kind of what my community is mm -hmm. about now. Like I do lots of campaign games back to back like things that i've never played before so like always blind playthroughs uh like full completion stuff like that so games that have really cool stories and um so for me that's kind of i've just been in like a holding pattern for warframe like yeah we can farm relics but that doesn't do me any that doesn't do anything for me like cool i've got ducats now <laughs> thanks like th yeah. so that's that's <clears throat> to answer your question that's what i want i want I want the new war. I want new 
uh, new story stuff to play. Like, I want to learn more of the Warframe mm. universe, right? We've got all this stuff yeah. coming out, and the, the Kuva Liches that are supposed to be coming out, you know, with this next update are um, so hopefully going to leapfrog us into some of that content, right, and prepare us for Empyrean. But I don't know if the new war is going away or if they're or if it's still on the table or if it's been morphed into you know empyrean like if it's gonna all like mesh together and we won't have that story or if empyrean's the setup for the new war and then like you know planes of of divari Div divari De devari deviri, deviri. Yeah, yeah yeah that yeah. one so like, that looked really interesting too like mm -hmm. what's the story going to be there like i think that's going to take a really long time like, um, give us those <laughs> <laughs> I've been and, and, and that's, I've been really that's worried. One thing I will with, give. I've ahead. been really worried when it came to like the planes of Jafiri that that's going to be like far beyond next year's Senocon. But um, I think that Drew is pretty certain about um, um, Neil War coming out at least before the end of the year, right? Yeah, like they they made the announcement that it's going to be Christmas this year. I think it would be really damaging to them if they didn't release it Christmas. Yeah, I honestly feel. What do you mean? They've they've delayed stuff before, like they've been. But like, they've yeah, not made an announcement for it before. We'll not, see. I, not I'm, in a I big video so. that's on their YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah on Tenocon. I, so I forgot about that, but yeah, he mentioned that. Um, so I saw people in chat already uh, speculate about, hey, we're we're getting the the, the Kufa liches now. We're getting the reworks now. Basically, everything they talked about, we're getting it now in a mainline update. Um, what's gonna happen with 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 Real Jack if it's gonna be in furry parts? Could the second part maybe be the new war mm. in disguise? What do you think, Drew? No, no. I, I, I think, I think the new war has been developed independently of all the other stuff on the side, mm -hmm. to the point of there, there, there's. It's just going to be a separate thing. It's like they want it to be like a repeatable quest right mm -hmm. like how can you have a repeatable quest where you're building your the the dry dock your 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 well, ship and everything it's, it's, it's well not, i I, I, I was thinking more of like they're saying oh it's going to be free parts and it's like the first part will be like the dry dock and the second part hey new war third part barrel jack like yeah, that maybe i may maybe Mm -hmm. Maybe, but I, I just think that we're not going to see the dry dock or anything. I, if anything, I feel that Imperion will be delayed to the other side of Christmas entirely mm -hmm. than they try to shoehorn in anything mm -hmm. this side. I think they're more concerned about making sure the new war is out by Christmas. I hope so, because I think that the the uh, the Warframe lore is something that I do really appreciate. Have you guys both played uh, Destiny Two? Now that's free. I've actually been playing it uh, again recently, and just makes me appreciate Warframe even more. <laughs> <laughs> Have Jim, you been playing yeah. it, Jim? Yeah, I've, I'm uh, I'm a like a Destiny Day One player, like of both Destiny One and Destiny Two, and that was that was one thing that if we got talking about, I was going to bring up like. This the whole past couple of weeks, I've noticed a bunch of friends, a bunch of streamer friends, a lot of people like are now streaming and, and finally getting into Destiny. And I'm like, oh, it makes me so happy to see like all these people and, and not just playing it, but like really enjoying it, too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you can think of them like I don't even have to name names. You're probably like, oh, yeah, that that person. I never thought I'd see them and that and that and that one. And it's like everybody's so, so happy. And I'm like, yes, thank you. And now now you can't just like, you know, now you can't just like say something of never played the game and just making assumptions right and it's like oh you're enjoying it it makes me so happy because i i do like i do like destiny a lot i i have been enjoying destiny but the problem i have is from a pc player's point of view where i have no idea what the plot of the first one is and like i'm so confused as to half the stuff that's going on like who is Gaul? Who is the speaker? Who is God? 
there are so many people that you oh god what was what um in forsaken what's the name of that woman i can't remember petra no not petra the other one <clears throat> can you describe her yeah she's not there what what do you mean she's not there no you know the sister uh, the, the queen yeah i can't remember the name oh uh marasov Yes, that's the one, right? Mara Sov, right? She has a huge plot element, right? Yeah. In the first <laughs> game. And, like, you, you know, people that are picking it up from the second game have no idea who she is. Well, and you can't go and find out without just browsing the web to find out. Well, you, you kind of can. You, you kind of can. So, like, Destiny 2 was set up in the, like, Gaul. There's, there's a whole Red War campaign, like, initial huh. Destiny 2. If you haven't played that, I would say play that. But I thought, so... You're right. So what I found out was people were telling me that if you start a brand new account, you start with all of that pre-completed since they start everybody at level 5750. Oh yeah. You have, to, you have to go find the the campaigns from I think they gave it to Amanda Holiday in the hangar. Yeah. 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 So like the Red War was Destiny 2. That was core Destiny mm -hmm. 2. Yeah. And then Osiris came out and then Warmind came out. And then Forsaken, uh, Forsaken. Forsaken no yeah. shadow key. So, and while you don't get a lot of that, uh, the reef lore from Destiny One, which which was pretty cool. Um, what they, I feel, what they did with um, with Forsaken when they reintroduced you with Petra and um, the Dreaming City, because Dreaming City was never in Destiny One. It was like an area for the Awoken. It was like alluded to, right? So it was really cool to see that whole environment and how it changed over the weeks um, in this one. And then when you finally got to, you know, go visit the the queen mm -hmm. as part of doing activities, it felt really neat. And you got some lore and stuff like that, um, which I thought was really cool. So I wish they'd force new players to, like, upon first logging in to actually do the, the Red War. I don't know. As, as someone who enjoys the stories, you know what I mean, and the lores that they, that they built in, um, I, I think that they should have made everybody kind of go through the campaign or at least pop up an option, right? Like, hey, this is the thing. Do you want to start? Like, not mm -hmm. not just mystery, have to go find the campaigns. I, I, I seriously like, spent, yeah. like, 15 minutes trying to find where I could get the where I could get a campaign because I played... Uh, I played it when it came free on Battle.net, so mm -hmm. I then that did launch me in the original campaign of Destiny 2. And then I moved over to Steam, and I didn't know that like it would all reset at the same level. So I was, I'm kind of surprised to hear that even if you start a brand new, you look, you just like you just toss in there like okay, figure it out. But I was like, right. where do I go? Because one thing with Destiny is that you have, uh, I have gotten a real appreciation for uh, for its uh, cinematics. I really like its score, the the tile sets. It looks really good. Like like there there are there are some things where I think it really like shines over something like Warframe. But when it comes to like the amount of things that you have and like the way it's oriented, I have no I have no idea where to go because apparently you get the campaigns, you can find them with the shop lady, which is like you have to scroll down to campaigns to see that you have them, and then you have to go to another lady to claim them, which is all the way at the other side. And then oh my god, like I really try to get into the destiny lore. But what I've always had a little bit with Warframe where you have like the Lotus pop up and they try to just deliver lore while you're shooting and look, like, hey, Tenno, do this. Hey, Tenno, did you hear about that? I'm like, no, I'm busy. I'm shooting. Um, <laughs> Destiny does that all the time. They'll have like one cool cinematic, which looks really well made. And then you go over to the regular game and it's just like, you just have like this little white thing of like your guardian, or, like, not guardian, the, 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 the the ghost. The, the ghost popping up and it's just like it says ghosts and it's like they're just talking your ear but it's it's for me like a little bit too low that I just like even if I try to listen I just very quickly like filter it out and like oh shit I just didn't get what they said and then you just mm. like it's so hard for me to keep track yeah I think that's one thing that has seriously helped Warframe is the way it tells its narratives Right. So obviously in the beginning, it was very much like Destiny. You were told you weren't shown. But then when they did the second dream and you saw that, you know, 
amazing cinematic scene where you know it's all new fresh new animations your warframe collapses and what's it called your operator crawls along the floor to to you know reactivate the warframe it was just like holy shit what the fuck's going on and the music is just oh but i think that more games really need to learn that you cannot exclude your player from the narrative they can't just be a gordon freeman i'm doing all the stuff but i have no voice of my own they need to branch away from that yeah no i um i feel that like i i've i've met players especially in warframe um when the second dream came out that absolutely started to hate the game because they loved this idea of having a a character that had no voice that had no personality so they could protect their own character on top of it but i do have like trouble connecting with my guardian in destiny because it's like most of the time it's first person few and then you always swap things out um like always swap your equipment out because you get better stats and then all of a sudden it's like you see him and he doesn't really speak i'm like oh wait oh yeah that's me I, I never have that connection but yeah um speaking of the second dream um how did you enjoy how did you experience the second dream jim what was that like second dream was was awesome i thought it was great like the second dream and then the war within i thought they were in the sacrifice like all the cinematic quests and like i said i'm a i'm a story nerd and so like being playing through something like that um, and both of those games share that element where it like puts your character in there. And I'm sure all games do that, right? Your own custom characters mm -hmm. is really cool. So I thought that was, I thought that was really good. It was definitely a, uh, it was definitely like a, uh, a turning point for Warframe, I think, you know what I mean? Cause they used to do like smaller types of campaigns and stories and, you know, <clears throat> ways to obtain the, the frames and things like that, that weren't really that story based i guess you know what i mean it's just mm -hmm. like hey you do a thing and you get a thing and this one was more like you know telling the narrative putting you into it and then giving you you know like the like a not really a conclusion because i didn't really end any of that it's kind of like continuation but yeah mm -hmm. i liked so, it <laughs> <laughs> so where would you like to see the new war go well exactly where we've been shown dude this the whole sentient world like with all those sitting out wherever they're they're hiding there and uh i think i think it'd be really cool to get to get either in the big ship which was you know we've all been speculating what it is and you know if hun house shows up and it's all it's all sweet and there's just tons of just 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 sentient stuff you know what i mean and then if we get some really neat lore in there where if there's been like some experiments going on you know, like from the Orkin and then we, we see uh, Ballas over there and then maybe the sentients were conducting their own experiments at one point. So then we get like, I don't know, like another hybrid Warframe that's more sentient than, you know, um, Revenant, you know, type of thing. Or we get like an army. Like what if there's an army of like sentient Warframes like that you fight against type of thing, like these really hybrid kind of how they did um, the Stalker ones, the Acolytes, but mm -hmm. they're more... They're more sentient hybrids, but they're controlled by like Hunhau or something, and it's like a like a gigantic army of death squad that you got to fight through. Like that would be sweet. Okay, okay. Question for you, solid solid question for the pair of you. Mm -hmm. right. We're obviously getting the Kuva Liches, mm -hmm. which are going to be the first ones are the Grenier. Right. Mm -hmm. Imagine you could choose any other faction. They don't have to be Kuva infused. Right. Any other faction, it could be a brand new faction. You can describe what that faction is. What should the next faction be? Jim? It's a lot of pressure. Uh, <laughs> would, or would you rather Michelle answer first? If Michelle has an answer, go for it. I'm trying to think. I don't of, have an answer, like, but I'll come up when, I, when I'm talking about it. So, like, the yeah. next faction. I think... Um, I'm really curious when it comes to the new war, because... I really hope that that will be the entry, the official entry of of the sentients. I think sentients have been given a bit of a false start because we haven't really seen them yet. Because we had Warframe started out with the Grenier, then we got the Corpus, and then we got the Infested. 
And I think that the Grenier were the original design. The corpus were like a completely new unit. And then the infested basically just started out like, what if we would like screw around with these models? And oh my God, here we go. Those are like infected Grenier and corpus. Then we got the sentients. And I remember them very clearly saying in like 2015, the sentients will be like the new faction, which will be super more powerful than anything you've seen before. And uh, you're going to have a really tough time finding these guys. And then, okay, so these enemies get introduced in the game and it's only on Lua, sometimes one or two show up. So I don't really feel like I've fought the sentience yet. And I don't feel like, even with the Eidolons, I don't technically feel that they're sentience. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, they are, but also no. So I really hope that in the new war, we can actually have like a sentient exterminate mission or something like that. Or an sentient, like, like you just only fight sentience. If we would have something else... Then Sentients and a completely new faction. We kind of have the brute force when it comes to the, the Grenier, which is like malformed, just like power. Um, then you have the, the, the Corpus, which is more like robotics and greed. Then you have Sentience, which is kind of like your AI gone, gone, like, like. AI gone Warframe, which is, uh, which is basically what these things are super high artificial intelligence and you have you infested which are kind of like you know you're infected uh i would probably like to see um, i'd like to see something different maybe some uh, maybe a faction which doesn't really represent anything humanoid because i feel that a lot of factions are just like they're kind of like humans Except for, I, I would argue that the sentience aren't. Except for the sentience, but then again, the sentience were like made by the Orokin, which like Orokin are kind of like humans. So like, I would love to see like a real alien species, like Elfie uh, says in chat, like something like that's like, oh my god, no one knows what this is because we all know what everything is now. So Jim, how about you? I've given you some time. While you've been talking, <laughs> I've been thinking, and I I I think I agree. I would. Uh... I've always really liked like the uh, the artwork and the styling of uh, the Orican stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so maybe there's like an old Orican or Dax faction that's been existing in a different solar system. Oh, so yes. Like maybe they like went off as like exiles or rogues, and they've got this entire like city and civilization. And maybe once we fly to this new system, that they're like on a different planet waiting. Um, or like doing their own thing and then once they feel our presence via an energy signature as we like fly into the solar system using their like scanners or something like they magically show up and then i don't know maybe maybe we make a settlement right like maybe mm -hmm. once we get to the new thing instead of it just being a star chart maybe we have like a home base settlement and then after a certain period of time we get invaded and it gets like destroyed and then they like overtake it type of thing so like a social space but then they they come in and destroy it and then our new social space like it evolves over time mm -hmm. to be like you know first it's us and it's really nice well kind of like camp site type of thing and then once we start getting up there then we get invaded and it's just like blown out and then we've got like retake it or maybe we can never retake it because these these new decks i don't know and then and then like meanwhile there's still like the sentient thing which we came for but we got to put it on hold because we're being attacked by these other people who we thought were extinct you know what i mean and they're all mm -hmm. sitting around playing games of comey and you're like oh my god like what's going on I really like that idea. Like, yeah. seriously, I think that when it comes to the the void and like the the, the void enemies, they're, they're they're just like corrupted regular units. I would really love to have like those those Dax soldiers that you see in the sacrifice, like just the golden mm -hmm. unit guys would be like attack you. It's like, oh my god, that would be amazing, and especially yeah. the evolving thing. Um, I remember saying that with the Plains of Eidolon when they released Fortuna, which was like three to four times bigger. I was like, why don't we apply that to the Plains? And instead of just making the Plains bigger, like, mm -hmm. why don't we just take like that like energy barrier that's around it, which like, why is that around it? We don't know. So let, let's give that a reason because there's a bunch of Eidolons outside. And um, only at night one can sneak through and we can take them down. But these barriers protect us from the Eidolons and we'll have raids into the Eidolon territory, which, which will just be like endless missions of Eidolons where you will die in five minutes or something. But if enough people do it, like they, like we can move the barriers and we can come to like a land where Grenier are tougher and rewards are more aplenty and you can move that out. 
But if you don't do enough, it will go back. And then you have, no, like, an evolving thing where, like, yeah. it, like, and I really like that idea with, like, the with like the home base where it's, like, we put something down and, like, well, we, we fight and we win and we lose. So, yeah, I really love that. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, one, one lore thing I want to jump on. Mm -hmm. um, the void enemies, they're not void enemies. The corrupted are created what's, by what's called the neural sentry, right? Mm -hmm. Which is supposed to be a defense system built by the Orokin that's in place in the towers. So the idea is that if the tower is invaded by any, the neural sentry will, you know, face hug the actual enemy and take control of it. Oh. Right? Mm. So those are actually pseudo Orokin enemy more than they are enemies of uh, which are from the void. You know, mm -hmm. the Dax that's actually in the Daviri trailer Right, that, I was going to get to that too. I was waiting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that could potentially be more of a void enemy. But one thing that would also be uh, kind of nice is if maybe something organic dies in the void, then maybe that could be a conduit for Wally to do its thing. Wally? Yeah. You know, do you not? Oh, the, the man in the wall. Oh, oh okay. I was yeah. thinking yeah. Wally, like, like the, the movie... <laughs> Like no, a robot. A robot. <laughs> I was like, well, he's either going man in the wall or going, like he wants to see cute, adorable robots that can fix things. Like, no, I, I was uh, literally uh, thinking, it was like, you, were you talking about a plan? Are you talking about like, like, like what kind of part of Wally are you talking about? I was thinking about the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is the man in the wall, you guys? Who is it? Well, it's clearly Steve. We agree. With his pink shorts. <laughs> I'd say it's Oryx. All right, Cena. So what will what would be your your faction if you could make one up? If you could create, one? I honestly would like to see the, like a huge evolutionary jump for the the sentience, where that they like you know maybe instead of being like the thin piddly things that we have against us, like there might be one which is like a big hulking thing. That maybe it doesn't have any legs and it's just floating along, sort of thing. But it just, I just, I am envisioning this thing that's like twice the size of a Tenno, just grab the head of a Warframe, just pick it up and slam it into the ground. Like a tentacle monster? No, I wasn't going to go, like, no, it actually has like hard constructed parts and things, but maybe like it just floats like on energy, sort of thing. The only thing I can describe it close to is an Archon from StarCraft, the Protoss Archon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my god, you actually know what that is? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, we already have a tentacle monster in the game, and that's Hydroid. Um, hashtag <laughs> save the Hydroid trailer, because it's still not out. I'm still waiting for it. I Isn't it just would... waiting on like a script? On dialogue? I don't know. Like They showed they were halfway through at some point two years ago. And I've never seen the Hydro Prime chair to come out, so I'm still ex like I, I think that they're still working hard on it. I think that that has priority over the new war. Must have. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many primes that don't actually have. Uh... Anyway, like anyway. the prime trailers are cool and all, but I think I think people put too much too much emphasis on them being needed to launch. Like it's they're cool when they started doing them, and it was like oh neat, but they're I mean, they're they're visually sweet, but just just give us another story. <laughs> but can can, can can you imagine? Can you imagine? Like these prime trailers that they did were pretty sweet, but this Hydroid yeah. prime trailer has been in the works for over two years. Two straight years, they've been working so hard, twenty four seven, at this Hydroid prime trailer. <laughs> oh um, my god, it must be like a feature length movie. Yeah, like imagine what it will be. Like if it's not a feature length movie, I'm just gonna like like delete my warframe account and hate warframe for the rest of my life but i'm i'm super excited warframe please give it to me i'm really stoked <laughs> <laughs> i got no expectations well, yeah, that's, that's, yeah i mean that's when it comes down to it it's it's creating it's it's creating a a trailer a cinematic trailer for a a loot box 
like a, a microtransaction is what is what it is. It's a it's a cinematic trailer for a microtransaction. Like, dude. Why? Okay. Okay. So. Okay, I got a question to ask because I don't know how you guys feel about microtransactions. I think, or like the loot boxes thing. Like, let's say loot, loot box because I think loot boxes are the most egregious, terrible thing. But if a the game developer would make a feature length movie for every loot box that they would put in the game, would you find it somewhat more acceptable than if they just like did it like EA did with Star Wars? Because I'd be down. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you make feature like movies for every single loot box you put in the game? No, all right, I'll give you it. I'm going to give when you it. When would there be time for them to make game content? I don't know. No, I think, I think, okay, so let, let's let's make this a bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. Say they turn around and say, like, okay, if you, the audience, buy 100 million loot boxes, right? We will spend the money to make a feature length film. Ooh. Right? Right? I think that would be a lot more acceptable. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Than anything else. Right? There, there are 50 million registered players for Warframe, 100 million loot boxes. That just means like two a piece. Yeah. Some people will buy more, some people will buy much less. Obviously, I think they should do what, like, I think every company should limit how many you can buy at a time. And oh, like yeah. That, you know, one person that freaking yeah, pays Jim, for that one did you, game. Did you hear about this? There was a guy in Australia that spent um, on a single mobile Transformers game that came out in 2016. He spent a total of um, 220,000 Australian dollars. <laughs> Which is like 150 US dollars. 150,000. But did he US win? <laughs> no, it was How just time savers. How? So how? You could how? Imagine if it would have, if he didn't spend that money though, he could still be way back where he was, okay? Mm hmm. Worth uh, it. Definitely <laughs> worth it. It's insanity, dude. It's insane. And like, okay, so he, so, so the, he wasn't the one that announced this, or it wasn't like his family. No, the, the, the developer of the game presented this on a conference to other developers saying, this is the reason why you should do microtransactions because we can get people yeah. to spend $200,000. Yeah. I mean, well, it, over the, over like how, so if, do you know how long over the course years. of how many, so how many? Three years. Three years. So it was oh, 6.1 thousand a month. It's a lot of money. Imagine what he does for a career if he has that much extra income. Well, who knows? Maybe he's just, he's got a really bad Maybe addiction and he's very bad <laughs> at money management. I mean, that could be too. Yeah. <sighs> That's crazy. But I don't know. I, I do like the idea circling back to Zeno's thought on instead of community-wide events, mm -hmm. like technically to a point, it would be a community-wide event. It would be, but instead of it being like the the caring or the um the giving thing where Tenno Bomb, wherever everybody gifts, purchases and gifts a bunch of um, in-game items that get donated to charity. If it's a another community goal where, you know, it's for content or something, it, it's, it'd almost be like it almost be like a like a Kickstarter fundraiser. But within <laughs> yeah. the game at that mm. point, like, hey, mm -hmm. buy our dragon mod packs <laughs> and then <laughs> that'll help us fund the next thing like that'd be kind of neat but it would have to be exclusive right it can't be something they've already promised you know yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, something yeah. that would already be on the on the foreseeable uh future scope of the game it would have to be like above and beyond like well we weren't planning on doing this um but people suggested it really hardcore especially that big gym id on that one uh show we watched that one day it was a great idea we want to include a new faction and uh social space but in order to do that in order to make his idea come to life specifically for him uh, we need to sell these uh, <laughs> these specific things. Comb it's... Prime, Comb Prime microtransactions that can fund a, a social prime. space. What? Comb is a grenier weapon. Exactly. You wouldn't. No, you get a comb you wraith. Shut, you shut your mouth. You get your wraith. No, I'm getting a prime. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't know where to follow on from this. <laughs> I'm just I mean, like, oh. All right, well, I can. Oh, go ahead. Okay, speaking of charities, quick aside, I noticed today, right before we're getting ready for the 
the show um, is that uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but Wizards of the Coast made custom a custom Magic the Gathering mini set mm-hmm. for uh, Extra Life, cool. and it's a partnership with My Little Pony. So it's a My Little Pony Magic the Gathering set. They've also got play mats to go with it, and purchases go towards uh, Extra Life. Oh shit! Can you, you can you link this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you link it in chat? In, I've, okay. I've just got to see this. There it is. This is the weirdest. What the hell? Yeah, like if you if you can zoom in on some of these cards, I think one of them is uh, this mythic pony gets uh, plus one plus one in menace if it's nighttime. If you're playing the game and it happens to be night for you, it's good. Or uh, another one is if you reveal an actual My Little Pony, something that you own, your the card gets protection from like all colors for as long as you reveal it or something. It's like totally neat. Like it's the coolest thing. I was like, oh, that's so sick. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Sold from October 22nd through November 5th or until they sell out. Mm-hmm. But how, how, how nuts that... is that? Like it's just a tiny little set. You can't play it in actual magic, but it, they, they're, they're naming it Ponies the Galloping. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's freaking sweet, man. I thought it was a great idea. It looks, it looks really funny. I love it. Yeah, I, I am hoping there are more than just those four cards. I um, don't know. It looks like there's three. It looks like the card sets are only three decks. Mm-hmm. So, or maybe the four decks. It looks like the three decks: the little, uh, the the stars, the moon, and the, I don't know, yeah, the, the other one. We'll but, never know. Yeah. Honestly, that looks really cool. Actually, the, 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 this jumps on a question that I wanted to ask when we were on the topic of loot boxes. When it comes to like Magic the Gathering or um, Pokemon cards, whatever card game um, you've collected in your childhood or still collect and you have really good memories with, um, how do you feel about them being basically loot boxes themselves? Because you, you buy them and you pull them open and you got to see what you have. And sometimes you get a rare and sometimes you just get doubles. Can I, can I jump on this? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So first off, the big thing about the the loot, uh, sorry, the Magic the Gathering card packs, mm-hmm. or the big thing is, it's a physical item, mm-hmm. right? So you can take that and then you can resell it. Mm-hmm. If you were to get a legendary card in Hearthstone, right, mm-hmm. you can't resell that to another player that really wants it, right? Mm-hmm. It, it it's just in your inventory. Things like Let's say, oh god, um, oh, Prime Chamber, right? Mm-hmm. The the really really rare mod in Warframe. You cannot take that and sell it, right? For real money, it's against the terms and conditions. If they find out that you've done this, they'll shut you down, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but with physical items, mm-hmm. you know, you still have the item. You can do with it as you wish. Another big thing is if Warframe. If Hearthstone, if Heroes of the Storm, if any of these games that rely on loot boxes shut down, right? That's it. You've got nothing for your worth, right? In EU law, it states that if you buy anything on a digital service, you have to retain that equal worth. So if something like Hearthstone shut down... Well, effectively, Hearthstone, sorry, Blizzard have to print out all the cards and send them to you, all the cards you own. Wow, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, that's EU law, right? And either that or they have to reimburse you for the worth of those items. Does that also right? account for, like, is that only loot boxes or is it also, like, Prime Axes with Warframe? I... Depends I don't know about Prime Access. Law, I was going to say, yeah, it depends on if the law specifies a loot box or microtransaction. Because honestly, no, I, no. I'd, I'd be happy if Warframe shuts it down if they just like sent me statues of like the Prime Access <laughs> that I bought. <laughs> Prime Access would be considered a, uh, a microtransaction. It's, um, it's not microtransactions. It's when you've got the blind bag systems. Mm-hmm. So right. like loot boxes or like Magic the Gathering where you open it up and you get um, random cards. Or if you were to go to 
you know those gachapon machines and things yeah. like you know you you crank the, the wheel the gachapon comes out you open it up and like it, it depends on which one you get it's just random right yeah. Do, so this, it's this will be a giant mess with all the mobile games that use this tactic like the infinite yeah. amount of these things and then when they at some point shut down it's like damn dude that's gonna be a giant mess yeah so but the thing is like so many so few people know about this law no one does anything about it it's it's the same thing with uh if if you ever find a company that you don't like like blizzard like i've learned about this for the blizzard thing um and you want to like fuck with them a little bit you can go if you're in the eu uh, you can go and uh, send them an email or a letter um, attaching your a copy of your photo, of your ID and then tell them that you want to have all the information that they have about you and you want to have you want to know all the information they have about you the way that they acquired it the way they used it to which parties they shared it to which parties they could have shared it and if they haven't shared it to other parties how other parties could have acquired their data your your data and if it has been leaked and if it hasn't if, and if it has been, hasn't hasn't been leaked how it could have may have been leaked so it's like they need to get this entire sheet of data um and this and like people said it's like about a month's work for like one single person to go and shift to shift for everything you give them a month wow. and you say if it, if i don't have it in a month because this is my right as an eu citizen i will file a complaint with the with the eu if you don't give it to me within a month so yeah if you do that you'll give a company a lot of work <laughs> it's insane weaponized gdpr yep that's hmm. the gdpr thing so have yeah. you guys been in like the collecting thing of um, like Magic or Pokemon? Yeah, I used to play Magic a lot. I just, mm. yeah. I uh, I just play Magic Arena now, though. The, um, the World of Warcraft TCG. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I, uh, I didn't know that existed. I played way too much of that. I spent <laughs> way too much money on that. Like, Oh, wait, it, no, I actually played that, too. Yeah, I... Um, wait, yeah, actually... Yeah, so you still have the cards? Several playmats. Oh, we, had right. a, we had a league at my store. Yeah, I th I think I might have a playmat somewhere. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure. It was like the only playmat I ever got, which was a pity prize. Mm -hmm. But no, wait, was that the pity prize or did I actually genuinely win that? Knowing you, it would have no. been the pity prize. <laughs> no, someone else won it and I bought it off them. That was it. Oh. Yeah, I bought their entry for them so I, get, uh, so I could get the playmat. Um... Oh. The, the pity prize was um, a t-shirt, which was, yeah, we got like two t-shirts per tournament sort of thing. So we, because we actually, we were judges, we were actually official judges and things. Um, whoever was the judge for that tournament, uh, we always had one t-shirt for the, the winner and then another t-shirt was just random luck. Like, you know, we just rolled the dice effectively to see who of the participants actually got it. And uh, at that point in time, it was me. Yay. Nice. Yeah. So that I, means I suck. <laughs> I, I, I did collect the uh, the Pokemon cards, but I never played the game. I just got them because they had funny Pokemon on them. So I had like an entire tin full. And recently I've been watching um, Max Mofo Pokemon, which is like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Max Mofo, but he's an Australian YouTuber. Um, came up by a very interesting way, um, making videos that nowadays you wouldn't be able to make on YouTube. Uh, but. He also has a channel where he just opens Pokemon booster packs. And I was like, let me take a look at my Pokemon cards now that I know a little bit more about them. And I've already told this on, stream, on my stream about like what I've learned. It's a lot of knowledge that you're never going to need in life about what is special and what's not. So I was like going through my cards. And apparently I have like this one Charizard card, which I never thought was special at all. And like oh, no, it was, was rare as hell. And it was wor and it's, it's apparently worth about 150 bucks. And I'm like, dude, I never knew. I'm not going to use it, but I never knew. <laughs> yep. Did you guys do the Pokemon card thing or not really? Just when it first came out. When I was yeah, a kid, I was like, yeah, cool. I bought a few of them and played it a while. So all my first edition cards are not in that good a shape. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to admit, like, so, so there's some people, mm -hmm. right, that are really adept at playing board games. Right, mm -hmm. we're talking things like, oh God, um, Settlers of Catan. We're talking, 
crap i can't i'm struggling to remember like, you know the, the that that ilk of game mm-hmm. right the the sort of game where you have to not only remember what you have but mm-hmm. what your opponent has right yeah. i can't do that i just i just i mentally can't do that so like i'd build decks and things for the warcraft tcg and it was like oh yeah i've got this cool mechanic and then and the, there was i was always playing one of my friends who was always playing a mage deck and that deck could prevent you from playing fucking anything so mm-hmm. like, i'm going to play this mini tonight <laughs> i'm going to play this mini tonight i'm going to cast this spell tonight i'm going to flip the table tonight fuck you <laughs> That reminds me of my first magic experience, um, which was at like Tenocom 17, like the last Tenocom I went to, 18. Um, because they always have this magic tournament afterwards, and I was like, oh, I want to, I want to try and join in. So, I, so I bought like one of these boxes, and then it was like, all right, well, we're gonna like make our decks or whatever, and um, I basically had to have Rob like explain to me what it was, and then I, my first match was against him, and it was like, um. All right, can I do this move? And he's like, no, no, no. It's like, can I do this move? <laughs> Eventually, he won. It's a big surprise, but um, it was pretty fun. But yeah, it's it's a lot to like be aware of. Like, what do you have in your hand, and what could someone else have in their hand? And how do you play against that? It's 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 a lot you need to know. When I was at the last Tenacon of 2019, mm-hmm. I had Zandi there trying to teach me how to play magic the gathering Mm -hmm. right no word of a lie i was getting so confused and what he was talking about we were playing in the park on the grass and i'm like Mm -hmm. i don't like the fact that these cards are touching the ground right (laughs) and and he it is just like right and like i everything i couldn't do anything my hand was awful like like oh cool three lands some monsters awesome like, you know, I just got to wait for some more lands or something. Everything I drew was just freaking not what I wanted. And then eventually, like, you know, I went for a walk around this uh, fair and things. And I noticed a JoJo t-shirt. And I sent it to Rebecca mm-hmm. going, oh, is this going to be the new work uniform? And during the game with Zandi, she'd come up to me and was like, Zeno, where did you find that t-shirt? And it's like, oh, let me show you. <laughs> um, it's like, I'm sorry, Zandy. I cannot get it. And she's like, No, no, no. You play your game. Just tell me what. No, no. I have to come with you. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> like, you know, I, I honestly, I was struggling so hard to actually understand absolutely everything because you just have to remember that the, your opponent could do stuff on your turn as well. And I'm like, Oh, no, I'm lost. I'm done. I, I cannot do this. Like, the extent of TCGs, I can do a fucking half stern and that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't do it anymore. No, I will not play half stern anymore. So, yeah. Um, I see people are here talking about um, Little Duck in the new war. What about Little Duck becoming the main character in, in, in Warframe's new war? I, I know that Casino really loves Little Duck's accents. Yeah. Uh, it's true to life. I can see why he would. Yeah, he, uh, I, I, I mean, he he's a Brit. They all talk like that, right? I thought they all talked like Bent Kids. Oh. <laughs> There's more Aussies than anything else. But, oh, no, I... I I, I cannot... I cannot stand it. Die. Okay, okay. So, which character in Warframe mm-hmm. annoys you the most? You know, in in speech, in dialogue, in in anything, and glitch lotus does not count. <gasps> Tim. Uh. Hmm. Dang, that's a good one. I don't. Man, because uh, I got to think what what characters are up there on top of the list that doesn't get much lines. So I, I will I will buy you time, Jim. You know, I I will obviously allude to it is little duck for me. Mm-hmm. The problem I have with Little Duck is that she starts like first off, her in the comic does not correlate with her in the game. She does not have the same speech pattern in the slightest, right? I don't know if anyone's read the comic, but she talks like a normal individual, not muckety mucks, 
which is just like, what the hell is that? What are you even trying to say? Are you talking about something that rolls rolls around in the dirt? I don't know. Talk the Queen's English. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I I, I cannot. Oh, Jack is me so. Yeah, no, for for me, it I think it would have to be regular Lotus, uh, because really, yeah, because the thing is, is that I don't want to spoil too much, but the thing is, is that um, I thought her character, her, the way that I view her character, really depends on the new war, because basically, I think that they've done an interesting twist with it. However, um. It's it's because of the memes that it killed me. It, it killed my love for the Lotus when it comes to um, people were coming out like, "Oh, Lotus is Space Mom," and I was like, "Okay, well, that's a funny meme. Let's let's call Lotus Space Mom." And more and more after that, I've been feeling like they've been given Lotus this pass to do anything to always be loved because oh, she's Space Mom, right? She can't do no wrong, and she's the perfect good. And now when she might not be doing what we think doing what is in our interest and is is alongside us we need to rescue her and bring her back even though i think a lot of these things that are being attached to her or why we should care about her are not deserved in the storyline it's more like oh because we all love lotus we all want her back right it's like uh no and like for me it's like if in the new war we're going to see um we're, it's it's basically going to be the plot line of oh we're going to go in there she fights us we fight her and then she comes back and it's like the same as before I'm just going to be like well that didn't do anything that yeah, just made her a completely that. flat character I'd rather yeah. like have have to like get rid of her to like break with a tradition and like set food on her own and become individuals um, or have to like have a completely different sort of relationship than and that is just like oh but you guys all love Lotus so it's so glad that she's back it's like no 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 I don't think that she deserves that at all and especially when it comes to that it's like two years ago that they um, did the weird thing with Glitch Lotus and they left us on this cliffhanger I thought for two weeks that thing was funny and then I was bored with yeah. it and I was like come on just give us more of the story and it's still not resolved and I'm like yeah, yeah you, I don't have the immense love for Lotus that I love to see that thing like for two years like just do something with the character kill it off or give it a place don't leave us here because I don't have these feelings for her because I don't think that she she warrants it at all it's just it's only based off a meme and I don't think that's worth it I can see that for sure I I completely agree. I think that two years or however long is too long. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to get some form of resolution with the Lotus. I'm fine with taking her back into the fold as long as it's written well. If it's mm -hmm. just like... Oh no, I need the error of my ways. Please take me back. I love this you. I, I'd be like, no, that that's that's weak ass writing. Yeah. I mean so Steve alluded to during Tanocom that she would have to make the decision between either saving her the family she fostered versus mm -hmm. the family by blood. And I mean, that instantly gives me an impression that, hey, look, she's coming back. Yeah. So I think that there's going to be some kind of, maybe we have to jam the helmet back on her head. <laughs> I think uh, so. Yeah. Cloud right. her judgment again. You guys keep talking. I'll be right back. Okay. But yeah, Jim, um, now for your character, will you dislike the most? I was, voice. While you were, I was trying to think of like who I could think of. That's just bothersome, but I don't know, man. Like, oh, so like I keep running my head through somebody in Fortuna or somebody in Cetus, but I can't, uh, I can't pinpoint one of them. Kansu? Like sometimes the, sometimes the 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 weird dialogue, you know, kind of kind of throws me off, and I'm like, all right, shut up. I just mm -hmm. I just want the mission, but I don't know. I it's probably it's probably it's probably more of the the Osterons than, or sorry, more of. Uh, the Fortunas. 
How do you how do you feel about the yes. the that's what how, it was. how do you feel about the Fortuna bellies thing when that came out? Bellies? Have you that's... gotten to max rank on Fortuna? Oh, the rank five thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It was interesting. I don't know how it made sense, but it's fine, I guess. Neat, but they didn't. I mean, it was sure. Drew, how really do you feel about it? How it how it works though, you know what I mean? Like it, how it, it's that far. It, wasn't, it wasn't needed. It just felt like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the way. Ooh! What, what's what's the value of doing that? I mean, it it just shatters the illusion. I I love the the idea that they were just like fully cyberized or something. Nope, their heads are in their torsos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I re- cool. I re- <laughs> I remember that when um, when I saw people on stream already having that, and I was like, "Oh shit! Okay, I, sh- I mustn't watch. I must get to the max rank and then see what happens." And I was expecting some yeah. sort of like cinematics or something where it's like, "Tenno, come here! I, I gotta show you something or whatever." I was just like, "Boom! It opens!" Like, okay, that's what we look like now. And I'm like, "Are you gonna explain this shit? Am I gonna have to just believe this?" Yeah. What? Not like a big veil behind the curtain thing. Mm-hmm. Keeps them warm. <laughs> you know I speak the true truth. So um let's um let's talk a little bit about um about Twitch again. Um how do you feel like so Jim, how do you do it with Warframe and streaming Warframe and around like these times where Warframe doesn't have a lot of content like now? Like can you still like are you still enjoying yourself in warframe on streams do you do you do a lot of other games or how do you manage that um in times like these yeah so i mean i've been variety for a couple years now um Mm -hmm. and it it started off by like replacing one day a week and then two days a week and three um for at least a year straight maybe more i'd have to go check but i've i've been doing warframe on just fridays now mm-hmm. um and it depends on it depends on if it's uh like a barrel Kateer day or uh, you know or s- something where there's like a big event but most of the time uh you know y- you get on and it's either it's either a full stream or or at least half stream uh of warframe depending on what there is to do and you know if there's like time limited stuff to get it'll definitely be more more coming up with the halloween event um Mm -hmm. this year because you know the usually around events you got a lot of stuff to do and uh when we got the summer event which was pretty neat so there was a lot of time you know squirt gun and nerds uh which was which was pretty fun to do too uh but but other than that uh i I tend to keep it busy so um yeah just just kind of just kind of whatever whatever's on the menu like i said i play back-to-back games for Mm -hmm. all of 2019 so couple days a week will be the campaign days and then the other two days will be like variety so and warframes included in that variety so what are some of the best games you've played this year oh um i really enjoyed playing through the borderlands is mm-hmm. the series before leading up to three and three beat three a couple weeks ago so that was pretty cool um final fantasy 15 had a really cool story too i really like that um beat that this year mm-hmm. uh, let's see what else it is like oh the uh, Dark Siders series was a lot of fun too. I really enjoyed all those. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I don't think I, I don't think I've played a game that I that I disliked. Did um, you play Anthem? Yeah, yeah, Anthem was great. Like I thought Anthem had a really cool story and the the dialogue was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the the part where Anthem gets a bad rap is because they changed the game. Like if you read that big long article that was written earlier this year, um, they basically changed the scope of the game last minute to be like a like a story adventure game to mm-hmm. a looter shooter, and so that's that's why there was no like post campaign like repeatable raid content mm-hmm. that everybody expected because the scope was changed. And so for me, I never I didn't grind the game hardcore, right? Like and and beat the whole campaign within the first week, and then you know grind for gear and then just be miserable like i played anthem for the story of the campaign played through it on my mm-hmm. campaign story days same with division two and like you know I, I kept playing and by the time i finally finished the game i was like wow that was a really cool story like what happens to these things that they like left hanging right i'm like ooh, mm-hmm. 
let's hope we get that back. Like, I want to continue that stuff. I thought it was great. Um, and then uh, when they had Cataclysm out last month or two months ago, I played played that every week and I created some, you know, YouTube videos and streamed it a few times. And I thought that was a lot of fun, too, for like repeatable content. Apparently, mm-hmm. there's something going on right now. I got to log in and check for like a Halloween event. Um, but I, I thought the game felt good. It just it just needs more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they need they need to continue either the stories. They need to add more, you know, repeatable contents. Um, and the Cataclysm event kind of felt like like I've never played Endgame Diablo three, but mm-hmm. uh, one of the people in my squad, Kira, said uh, he said it, it felt kind of like Diablo three greater rifts it, where you could like go in and do stuff and like loot and kill a bunch of enemies and uh, for like repeatable. So it's like that seems like a winning success. Like apparently it's great. You can continually scale mm-hmm. it up um, type of thing. So I was like, well, as long as there is. You know what I mean? It just it just needs more. It just needs to mm-hmm. more development. So, in my opinion, yeah. like in my opinion, like that's 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 from where I see it. Is is it ran into uh, roadblocks and feedback because there wasn't any post post campaign stuff to do? Yeah, so. no, I was I I played it for like the beta weekends or the like like demo weekends and then mm-hmm. like for like entire half a week and then I was like nah. And I put it down, and um, yeah, I felt I felt that there was like a big hype when it like came out, and then it came out, and then like it just dropped, and like it's it's sad. I really wish that it was going to be like a great competitor to Warframe because that would have been awesome. Um, yeah, and it I, just needs more content. Yeah, in my opinion, it's it's kind of like how uh, what's the space game? What's the space exploration game that launched flat on its face too? Uh, <sighs> Norman Sky this year. Sorry? Star Citizen? No. Uh, it was another one that was hyped up and then wasn't delivered as promised. The, the, um, oh, No Man's Sky. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that one. That was last year. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Last year, that launch flew flat on its face. People thought they were going under, and there was a big thing where they felt deceived. And then they kept developing it. And then this year, dropped the, the big update, right? Mm-hmm. And now now everybody says it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's an amazing experience, and you can do a lot, and it's everything they promised. So... Like it's not it's not unheard of for you know games to launch with a with a, a predisposed like idea of how it's supposed to play and then you know launches without that but then they continue continue development and then make it what they said it was so and and I, you know, there's gonna be people who are gonna disagree and say well if they if they said the game's gonna be this they should have launched with this um, but you know what I'm I'm not a developer I didn't. I didn't work on the game like t- t- don't argue with me <laughs> i played it i played it and enjoyed it like i can't tell you the the dev timeline of a game so uh, well actually um now that you're here um and we talked about twitch the other topic that i want to talk about is um of course anthem the the dev timeline and uh why did you decide to why did anthem decide to call the game anthem um i thought you were the perfect guy you're not on the team but you know we're gonna ask you these questions anyway <laughs> course not yeah that's an interesting question i don't know um after like i said after reading the article i didn't even know that it was supposed to be named something else um but i i I guess they named it anthem because that was like one of the key objectives in the game the anthem of of creation or so i i don't remember much about it yeah it was one of the uh the artifacts or whatever the the thing that that made things go boom and mm. messed up the environment and things like that. Now, the one cool thing they did with Cataclysm, though, is they made, like, a world-changing event. Like, Cataclysm was uh, a world-changing event to the map. So, like, if you did the free roam, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Pre-Anthem, it looked one way, and now post... or uh, Pre-Cataclysm, now post-Cataclysm, the one area is permanently changed. You know what I mean? So it's Mm -hmm. like they're developing that over time, which I think is really, really cool, which we touched on earlier with like, you know, Warframe content and, you know, other games that do that as well, like Destiny, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. But I think that's literally the only reason they called it that. And maybe it's easier to say and it started with an A. Too many games start with like the letter S. There's actually, yeah, dude, there's so Uh, many. Damn. Um. But yeah, it makes me a little sad that the directory in Twitch is just like dead of Anthem. No one streams it almost. 
Yeah, Every Cataclysm came out, it was it was popping. It was like four hundred people. Yeah, I had like I had like a tenth of the directory number one. <laughs> it was great. Nice, 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 yeah. nice. So yeah, uh, let's see. Cool. Is there anything that you are excited for? Any games? Any events? Any thing? Warframe? Not Warframe? Movies coming up, or yeah. having just previously launched? Both. Um, yeah, let's, let's do both. Do what's previously launched, and then do coming up. Previously launched, I've been enjoying a lot of. Um, uh, I think Shadowkeep has been pretty cool so far. Um, you know, oh, uh, Iceborne in Monster Hunter World, it essentially doubled the size of the game. Like mm -hmm. it, it's insanely large for the value. I think that's that's definitely contender for game of the year again this year, at least uh, RPG of the year. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying that off stream mostly. A, little, a couple streams, you know, on Thursdays here and there um, of that while I've been playing through that story. And so that's that's been a lot of fun. Uh, coming up, obviously, always excited for the new Star Wars movies. So I've uh, I, I saw ticket sales went on sale today for the new Star Wars. So I'm pretty really getting ready for that. Yeah, dude, really? Star Wars, let's go! Like, come on, That's not hell yeah, man! Give me some lightsabers, bro. Um, <sighs> and then uh, I don't know, I don't think there's any new games coming out towards the end of the year, right? Cyberpunk is next year, mm -hmm. right? Still, still hopeful for that. I think they're gonna do good. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, this coming couple of weeks is going to be Extra Life Game Day, so we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, good happening in the world, which I'm excited for. Oh, yeah. Raising money for, for charity, which is going to be mm -hmm. sick. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have um, another really cool thing on YouTube coming up, which I can't talk about. But, um, yeah, um, if I was saying Mr. Beast to Mark Rover, um and treaties, you might be able to figure it out, but uh, it's gonna okay. be, it's gonna be way bigger than anything else on YouTube before. Um, it's pretty insane, and I'll uh, I'll tell you guys about it if you're interested afterwards. But um, yeah, like I'm really excited about that. Um, in about a week's time, you're you're probably gonna see some of it. Uh, but yeah, we have the extra life thing. Then we have, of course, the holidays coming up really soon as well. Mm -hmm. These are gonna be fun times. Damn, 2019 goes fast, man. It's insane. Yeah, this year did go really fast. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly quick. It did. So yet the content is still always so far away. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, Warframe. Let's go back to that. Mm. Do you think that the way... Okay, so this is a hard-hitting question. Do you think the way that Warframe is being developed, where they're constantly beefing up the big updates, the big main lines, that the game is going to be sustainable for the long run? Or are you pessimistic and believe that you know it's going to get to a point where there's going to be an entire year without content? Without major content. I was going to say we're already there. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty optimistic person by nature. So I feel like they, like they got a good finger on the pulse um, mm -hmm. as far as timing. Because we used to get very quick, small events type of thing, small content drops. Um, and then they, they shifted to the big once a year releases of cinematic quests and, and uh, story campaigns and things like that story quests um it is getting much longer in between those though which is slightly concerning to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like don't get me wrong i love tenogen and uh, you know i know a lot of the creators and what they do is great and uh new fashion is is always something fun in the game and you know it, it helps support the development um but uh but yeah to, to to circle back to your question it's i think if they go too long without major updates uh with no end game ish content i guess um mm -hmm. it's 
it's uh, it, it'll be it, they're just the, the players will be you know people just come around for for the for the the event and then they'll be done right it's mm-hmm. yes yeah, no a, it's like a spike and done spike and done yeah. over and over and i don't know uh, i don't know if that's profitable i, r- I really don't but um i, I feel that... as though and i brought this up before with uh previous streamcast that I get the feeling that a couple of years ago, and I don't know, you joined in 2016, so you might, um, you might have experienced this as well. Like I felt it more on the Twitch side of things, but that's also where I like got to know like a lot of people. That Warframe had like a like, it started off slowly, and you just had like a couple of creators that were like, "Oh, I'm playing the game. Let me make videos about it. Let me do some streams about it." It wasn't really getting a thing that you know anyone did. And then people got to, and then more and more people started doing it. And then we kind of got this community around it. And I got like really excited because we got like the second dream and then the war we're in. And then Tenocom became a thing. And now it feels, if I look at like the Twitch directory, I, I see a lot of people that have just like, that were once like streaming War from a lot that have now moved on and do their other things and just come back once in a while when there's like a brand new update to just play that and then go on which I perfectly can understand. Um, but it doesn't feel like Warframe has that, that like traction anymore that's like this hot thing where everyone is coming at. And um, I'm, I'm talking about Twitch now, but I feel that this is a very, uh, very like similar thing to the in-game community where it's like, um, I feel that a lot of veterans, well, veterans are, it's maybe not the best word, but a lot of, uh, what is it? Um, currently, and like, like end, end game players, long lasting players play the game and at the end of it just just like they, they, they play for everything and they wait for the next update and they come and they wait and everyone else is like on that track to become like go on go on go on and then wait and go on go on and wait it's not like everyone's just like showing off like i felt like they, they were just like end game players are showing off their fashion up get new players and new players just joining in and learning it's just like you know it's kind of like this thing where it's like you start you finish everything you wait and that's what it feels like. But I don't know whether that's just me or whether you feel something similar. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. It's, yeah, I think I, I kind of mentioned that earlier as well, like, or at least touched on it. I That's mm-hmm. that's definitely what it feels like. You just, you, you obtain everything and you're like, or everything you want to obtain. For example, like I, I had everything on Xbox and then when I started over on PC, I'm like, I'm not, like, I know the weapons I'm using, right? And mm-hmm. the, the weapons I like to use. So on the PC account, I'm I'm currently a mastery rank twenty four by accident. Like, I'm nope. I haven't I haven't constructed any of the dojo weapons because I don't use any of them. I'm not going to use the format. <laughs> no, Does of me course no good. Not. Like, yeah. So like you know grinding that and like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I don't mm-hmm. I don't, I, r- I rarely do sorties. I don't do arbitrations. I don't I don't really care to do idolons. Like, every once in a while, if it's nighttime, we'll run one tri cap and that's it. Everybody's like, what should I bring? You know how shoot. Do you want me to bring this frame or this frame? I'm like, bring whatever you want. It's we're just doing one. It's, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're doing this casually. Like it doesn't, it does us no good to be hardcore and sticklers about what you bring. Like, oh, I did, I did four in a night. I did five in a night. I soloed seventeen <laughs> tri caps in a night. Okay, okay, okay. Good job, dude. Like that's great. <laughs> like really, it is. It's that's cool. What do you got? What 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 did that get you? Some arcanes you already had ten of. <laughs> what what do you want now? <laughs> like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. did you get another articula did you get some more ribbon transmuters like there's no i mean but you're right it's like mm-hmm. you, you get the stuff you want and then you're kind of waiting mm-hmm. so i don't know if it's and I, I really don't like i could throw out some ideas on how it might on how we could fix it but like i don't know if an ongoing community event would help like i don't know if uh if a social space with a, a changing you know, like the changing thing we talked about earlier, where you could like the, the world constantly changes, right? Like they've they've done similar things with the planes where you get the the ghouls doesn't really change anything when the event's done. Or uh, what's the infestation one? Yeah, Plague the, Star. Plague Star. Yeah, mm-hmm. we thought that was going to be a permanent a permanent uh, effect in the planes as well. But it doesn't. It goes away and then planes remains as it is like you know, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's not. Uh, which which makes sense in I guess in the scope of Warframe, it's just you know an event comes mm-hmm. around and if you don't have the stuff you do it, if you already have all the stuff you don't bother with it. Yeah. Like. So. 
But that's, I mean, that's the beauty of Warframe, right? You've got people who haven't experienced any of that, brand new players coming, and then you've got people who've already done it all. So it's the balance of how do you, how do you continue making new content for the, you know, the players who have everything, mm-hmm. who are God mode, right? Because Warframe is God mode simulator. Mm-hmm. And how do you make the stuff that's tough and challenging for those, but also can be played by new players? And I've talked about it before with, mm-hmm. uh, with other creators. And I think the answer is you don't. Like, not every bit of content can be played by everybody. And I think no. that's where, where they're running into trouble is, um, you know, raids are, aren't meant to be run early oh. on in your, in your I, gaming career. You're, you're not meant mm-hmm. to play, you know, level 100 mm-hmm. missions no. when, you're, when you're brand new. Like, it's, the stuff takes a while to get to. Like, mm-hmm. think of any other game that's got long, la- let's just, like, look at World of Warcraft, right? Like, can you go do instances and raids and multiplayer things like when you're, you know, any anywhere under level 60, I don't know what the level cap is anymore, 70, 80, 90, 100. Like, can you can you easily join a, a group and run an end game level thing when you're not end gamed and farmed for appropriate gear at that time? I, I don't play it, but I really don't think you can, right? It's not a... Odd, it's oddly not a, enough, right? oddly enough to, to prevent you from going down a line that you may not so much regret, but be called out on. You can, right? You actually can. So they introduced a system called Looking for Group, LFG, right? Okay. And the whole premise of it is you can join content at set levels. So if you wanted to oh. go to the latest dungeon, right, there, there's different degrees of difficulty. So there's normal, heroic, and I think there's now mythic, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole idea is that anyone can join the the normal as long as you meet the minimum level of requirements which is probably that set and defined by the zone right mm-hmm. okay so like for example wrath of the lich king you could either go to borean tundra or howling fjord right so that meant that the dungeons were at least level 70 mm. right okay cool then, if you wanted to do the heroic versions of those dungeons, you had to be max level, right? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they decided to go one step further. In order to do those dungeons, you had to be max level, and your gear score had to be, again, a minimum level, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how they actually combated that. So to make sure that the person got to the right place that they were adequate for they had to meet these minimum requirements. I remember in the following expansion called Cataclysm, the dungeons were a lot harder, right? So they made it a lot more difficult to be a tank in those situations. And I'm sure you guys know what I mean by a tank. Right. Michelle? Yeah, one of the stealth units, right? I'm just going to agree with you. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> what are those stealthy? So, you you know, you had to be a tank. And in the first patch, which was 3.1? Uh, nope. 4.1? Something like that. When they first introduced uh, the, the... Sorry. When they did release the first patch to Cataclysm, they introduced what's commonly referred to as the Thrall Cape. Right, mm-hmm. Thrall is a character in World of Warcraft. You do a quest for him, and he would reward you this high-level cape, and that would drag everyone's gear score up. Cool. So you would go do a dungeon with people that had mediocre gear at best, <laughs> and they're like, oh, "I can't heal this." Yeah, because you got that bastard cape on, and you fucking cheese your way into the damn thing, and like you know, and and you would get stuff like this, right? Yeah. So the system isn't infallible, right? But a looking for group or looking for raid system is certainly a better way of dealing with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no, I I remember one day when they took raids out of Warframe, and they're like, it made sense that these things were like standalone systems that were very different from the rest of the game and were there for like very buggy with every update. I could get behind that. 
But one of the things that really egged me on when they like said they were going to remove this in like a forum post. It was like, oh, we're going to remove this. Here's a forum post. But we're going to remove it. Like a lot of players just played Warframe for that raid thing. Mm-hmm. They just said that, and I'm like, they were saying, yeah, we're going to remove the raids because uh, because it's buggy and because it's not accessible to new players. I was like, wait a minute. The end game content is not accessible to new players? Hold on. Hold on. Is that a problem? I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, I, I will admit, they were like tough to get into because we didn't have the looking for group thing. So you need to like have a key and then have eight people to do it with. And if you had like, we had Dark Slayer, Free Win Free, that was a great like raid streamer that would teach the raids. But if you were just a random person in the recruiting tab, you wanted to do a raid, like, and you didn't know if the raid school bus, which is like a other like community within Warframe. Um, if you didn't know about it, I didn't know about it for the longest time. You just had to like, you were just in recruiting. like, I'm looking for a raid. And it's like, you can only join the raid if you know how to do it. Well, then how do I learn how to do it? So like right. that was a yeah. point of entry, but I thought that was really weird when they like and I was like, yeah, it's so hard for new players. Like, no, it's not supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be hard for new players. This is not something you do in day one. Yeah. The problem. It's, 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 can I go real quick? It's funny yeah. you mentioned Dark Slayer because the the day it was like day one. I think it was day one that I started my PC account. Mm-hmm. I had, I had my Excalibur, my MK1. Paris, I think I grabbed. No, I grabbed Bratton. It was like Bratton, Skana, and Kunai, I think is mm-hmm. what I grabbed. And like, Dark was like, oh, Jim started a PC account. Go on. And he DM'd me on Discord while I was streaming. He was like, you want to do a Law Retribution? I'm like, <laughs> I'm level 23 with MK1 gear. I'm like, we'll all run it. And I was like, oh my God. So we did. We ran uh, an eight man Excalibur law of retribution <laughs> and i hadn't even 30 one of my pieces of gear on the account yet i was just like it was a brand new account it was the funniest thing ever i was like this shouldn't be possible like why is this possible i like i knew what to do i was very mm-hmm. very familiar with the raids like i you know i've ran them several times and i've taught mm-hmm. them but it, it was just it was silly nonetheless i was like all right yeah let's do it let's do the yeah. end game content get me a couple of arcanes and we'll go from there but it was it was the funniest thing ever Mm-hmm. Damn, I wish I saw that. It's yeah, probably saved in one of his VODs somewhere. Out of interest, did you wipe often? No, not at all. Oh. So, at all. one of the problems that DE faced with the whole raid content mm-hmm. is I think a lot of it was down to inexperience on how to build it. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh. So, you know, because if I don't think any of their prior games had anything like raid content before, right? The structure Mm -hmm. of Warframe required you to have like a minimum internet connection to be able to do anything. I, now that I am back on ADSL 2, cry, um, I have to, my brain's just frozen. ADSL too. So I've just seen the number of people that actually. You have to this. dial up internet. No, 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 no. I have to have someone else host because otherwise I will lag them out. Mm-hmm. Right? Not oh, by choice. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So there were certain things that were a minimum needed to make sure that raids were viable in Warframe. But another big thing is that they didn't have the experience needed to know how to construct a proper raid. Right. I remember them turning around and saying countless times, you know, we have problems with the raids because every single time we want to do a new release, we have to then postpone it like a week because we have to fix the raids because the raids had exclusive content behind them with the arcanes. They had to make sure that the raids always worked. Otherwise, it was a huge problem, Mm -hmm. you know, so. I bloody get it, man. No, I, I, I can't imagine because it was like the only place where you could pin eight people, which is funny because like I remember doing in 2016, like a, um, a, a firework special or anything. I don't know. Some sort of video where you're like, what, when would eight people and just like used mirages and like fireworks to like do like a light show or something. It was my very first video that passed a thousand views and was like, damn, hell yeah. Um, that was like the eight player experience, which will always stick to me uh, stick to me but like aside from that it was like eight players is something that you haven't seen before 
and anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I can only imagine if they like, put in a new Warframe, it's like, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Let's think of some powers. But you don't necessarily know how it interacts with every single piece of gear. And what if, like, every single, like, like let's say you have, like, two Oberons. Like, what what does that do with, like, your, your health and your, like, your renewal? And what if, what, 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 what if you have three Oberons? Or what if you have, like, mm -hmm. seven Oberons? Like, can you still die at that point? It's like... I can imagine if they like put in new stuff, especially like weapons or warframes that do interesting things. Like, where are you gonna go with that, and yeah. how does that work out? The the one thing you said in what you were just talking about when you mentioned gear sparked mm -hmm. an idea in my head from uh, from Destiny. <laughs> I actually is uh, in Destiny One. It was very very prevalent. Uh, two, it's it's a little bit um, in in the raids. Um, going back to raids, but there was raid specific weapons mm -hmm. and gear that you could have that had bonuses um, that aided you in those specific raids. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how easily possible that would be for Warframe, but if there was certain, for, so I'll just do like Vault of Glass, right? Is the Destiny 1, Year 1 raid, mm -hmm. um, where there was these floaty like oracles right there were just tones of light and blocks and you had to shoot them right and, or, mm -hmm. or the whole everybody wiped is like a white mechanic well once you beat the raid and you got one of these guns the guns had and you know a few of them had oracle disruptor on them so you dealt additional damage to the oracles so mm -hmm. you could kill them quicker and easier to help you know with your progression mm -hmm. so that's just an example of one of the the built-in mechanics on some of these weapons and armors and things um other ones were like hold on to an orb for longer Right. Like if you mm -hmm. have to carry an orb to a certain point to deposit. Well, if if Warframe had raids and they dropped raid specific weapons since we or maybe even armor. Right. Maybe maybe it's fashion stuff that you could equip. I don't know. But if there was me such mechanics in the game and it was still eight players, but then you had specific armor that you could earn. Like if there was a specific drop table for, you know, uh, if, uh I, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's not event specific. It's uh, content specific perks, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be like, okay, well now now we've got something to to work for, right? We're gonna run mm -hmm. this and we're gonna learn it so we can get the full set, right? So we can make it easier to run it more and help new players and stuff like that. Like that's that's unique stuff that you can use in that specific circumstance. And the only, you know, the, the reason I'm thinking this might actually work is because they're coming out with the Kuva weapons now, the Kuva huh. Lich weapons, right? So, like, we mm -hmm. we don't need another Tonkor, right? But the Kuva Tonkor, for example, is going to give mm -hmm. not only Mastery Rank, but it's going to be different somehow. It's going to have a different something on it, yeah. right? So it's not out of the mm -hmm. question that we get event-specific, you know, armor, weapons, gear, mods. I, I don't want to say mods. I think that's, like, copping out a little bit. But well, maybe it comes in the form of a mod, right? Like maybe you get uh, mm -hmm. a primary mod that gives something for that that specific uh, mm -hmm. task, right? Kind of like how they did with the sentient mods. Yeah, I've sentient. I've always been a big proponent for um, content or like content provided uh, gear. So in the sense of mm -hmm. like, hey... The way that Destiny does is like you kill an enemy or you, you complete like an, a quest. Here you go, a weapon. In Warframe, you generally just like you kill a bot or you, you kill enemies and you get a weapon part or you get like the resources for which you can craft weapons. Like generally, it's fine. But especially when it came around with the login system thing, um, I think that stuff like a Star and weapons that are in the login rotations, like that shouldn't be in there. Like put those on like skill things. Like do like have a hard content, have like a raid or something so that like depending on how good you are as a player you can acquire these things and if then if you if you get to there like within like a month which i've seen people do you get it within a month but it feels right. really weird uh i've had a player like come up to me during streams where they were like oh i've i've, I've finished everything in the game i played it for three months and i've gotten through everything but all these login things i can't get because i just have to wait days it's like that's weird like why is it not if you're good at the game you get things I think that that would be a great thing. Um, I think that that would be pretty cool. I think my internet's going a bit nuts, guys. Yeah, I'm noticing it. Is 
I'm noticing oh. internet issues. Oh my god, they both left me! <laughs> I'm alone. I'm alone now. I have moved. Okay, Whoa, we're back to use east. I'm, I'm all by myself. All by myself. I'm back. Back. I think I'm back. All right, we're 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 we're, we're I, getting them back. Here we go. I I don't know why the the cameras have swapped position. Th thanks Discord. So um, now for me it's still alright. Uh, Jim is just okay, his profile yeah. icon. Oh, he's coming back. There we go. Like I I I swapped the 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 loca the region and then all of a sudden Discord restarted for me. I'm like, what the heck's happening? And mine mine crashed too when you did that. My voice dropped to zero and disconnected me. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> super weird. Right. Um, okay. So, crap. What was I gonna say? Uh, we were talking about content-specific um, rewards. Right. I, coming from the background of playing Diablo three for so damn mm -hmm. long, mm -hmm. I am against looter shooters. Right. Okay. I am against like the RNG factor. Like people complain oh, yeah. that Warframe is a farming simulator, mm -hmm. right? I am sorry. Diablo 3 is leagues worse. Right? <laughs> you might be after that one opalescent rifle from Borderlands, but you won't get it because RNG fucking hates you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I'm that's gonna an, suggest, huh? I was gonna yeah. say that's an easy fix, though. That you just do what Destiny did with the exotic drops, where if if you get an exotic drop, it'll have a higher chance of dropping one that you don't already have. It's almost guaranteed you'll get one that you don't already have out of the available ones you don't already have. Yeah. So I mean, to be fair, um, transmutation in Warframe is the highest chance of actually getting mods you don't have, but no one fucking uses really? it. Yes. Yeah. Transmutation is weighted to give you mods of a rarity you do not have, right? But everyone's just gone and forgotten this because no one it... likes the idea of wasting four mods for I, I think they have to be like four uh, mods, same rarity but different mods. So you couldn't just put mm -hmm. in like four oh God, what was the the one that was so easy to Power get? Power throw. <laughs> It might be power throw it actually. Yeah. yeah you, you know, that that didn't help your your cause of getting a good. A oh, good okay. Reward. I see. So it yeah. has to be four different rares. Okay. Yeah. But even so, like, how many billions of mods are you sat on? Oh, I turned them all into endo. <laughs> oh, really? I nice. <laughs> I, that's, my, wow. that's my number one endo source, dude. I just like, oh, yeah, I've got 50 of these. Like, it used to be, you know, several hundreds. But since mm. learning that you can just dissolve them into endo, I was like, yes. They're, they're gone. Let's get rid of them. Let's endo it up. All right. Um, shall we move into questions? Yes. Let's move into questions from the audience. See if they have anything to say and go from there. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions regarding anything, any topic, anything, whatever you feel like, feel free to post it in there. We might pick them out. So, yeah. Yep. Or, or we'll just sit here in silence and be awkward. Like professional streamers, yeah. Professional, we are, professional. we are so professional. The start was fantastic. Uh, I uh, yeah. the, the, the the break in between was amazing. When you guys just popped out, I was like, all by myself. How's a baby formed? Well, no, you how see, is baby formed? It didn't. It in, It involves. It involves alcohol, <laughs> and, and a rock concert. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say a bus stop. <laughs> involves alcohol and a bus stop. <laughs> After a rock concert. <laughs> After a rock concert. And uh, you need to make sure your phone's battery is dead so you can't contact anybody. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, just. Nafidia asks What are your opinions on how quickly Series 1 of Nightwave has been recycled? So, like the rewards and like the wolf emote and the wolf armor. And a lot of like Nightwave series one stuff that were particular towards like the Wolf of Saturn Six is already back with the new intermission Nightwave thing. How do you See, feel about I that? See, I told you I should. I asked you if I should have logged in to check out the series intermission Nightwave rewards before the show, and you said no, no, no. Don't we're. Worry. I'm telling you about it now. We're, now we're, we're all in this together. I was just like, I really fucking hope that they're gonna be in um, 
I, I don't know what the rewards are, have... but the fact that they came back around, I think, is a good thing. Um, I remember when I saw Wolf Beacons in Barrow's Beacons. thing, uh, like a month ago, I was like, what? And so I bought a few up. I was like, oh, good, because I don't have the sledge yet. This is, we. I need this. Like, mm -hmm. And then I found out apparently Wolf was farmable <laughs> after the fact. It's like, son yeah. of a bitch. Like, I could have just ran him for, you know, unlimited amounts of times. Anyways, that's besides the point. Um, the question, I think it's, I mean, I think it's fine. I don't know if putting it back in an intermission is the way to do it. Um, but there, there has to be something somewhere, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they've already set the precedent of all content should be available to all players, regardless of what time you played the content or what time you're starting the game. So mm -hmm. like, no, there's no exclusive content in Warframe anymore, right? Like all, you know, exclusive sigils, rewards, weapons, mods, anything you got from an event five years ago, um, should still be readily available for players who join today. Well, right? there's no like, my, time lock my... stuff anymore. My question, though, is if you already have this stuff, could you get an alternative amount of nope. credits or Kuba? No. Like, that 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 should be a thing. You should be able to get oh, like credits, right. and because I know Kuva is now permanently on Nora's shop, mm -hmm. so just like credits, 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 Kuva, 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 <laughs> Kuva. Yeah. No. So for, for, for me, I panic. I feel that I. I stand a little bit different towards the uh, availability thing. I think that in the end, everything should be available and there shouldn't be like very exclusive things that like if you missed an event, well, sucks, it's never coming back. But what I remember from like the events when I started is that these events would come out and if you completed the entire event, you got to the end of it, you would get a weapon, like which would be like a Fandle or a Wraith. And then if you didn't get that, well, you didn't know if it was coming back. And then a couple of years later, Baby Burrow came around and then he brought some of these items once a year or once every half a year. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. I can buy them back if I want to. You didn't always have to have that window, but sometimes it would come back so that you knew that you could prepare to get it. Mm -hmm. Now, though, I feel that like the Wolf of Saturn 6 hasn't been gone for that long and you can already get it. And it's like the same thing with the Fire Patch on Fortuna with like the Optic Grafando. It's like, I know people that farmed that thing, like that, like that mobile defense thing when it was like in its early, like very boring stage. You know, it's like in mm -hmm. its later, less still boring stage. Um, yep. Like they spent a lot of time on it, got that Optic Grafando. Now it's back every two weeks. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I don't want things to be completely exclusive, but, like, I also want it to be, like, you know, put your time into this. You, you'll have it for a while. And I think that they did it very well. Where it's like, I mean, every once a year we'll come back. It's like, if you want it, you got to wait a little bit. Like, then that's yeah. fine. And then we'll come back around. And without without going down the, the, the discussion rabbit hole of that whole thing, like, to your point, I, I do agree. Like, it, it devalues, or it, it mm -hmm. certainly, as, as someone who... Who grinds an event mm -hmm. you know either the the fissures event or the summer event right like it it almost feel like it, it feels like it devalues the more often and easier it is to obtain something afterwards mm -hmm. uh oh if you remember the if you remember the valentine's day event from two or three years ago where the only way to do it it was a conclave event you had to shoot them with arrows yes. that had hearts or you had to you know um the only way to get like one of the skins and then the uh the heart statue for your landing craft was to do the event, right? Was, mm -hmm. to, was to play the conclave, and it wasn't quick, um, but you know you, you enjoyed it. And uh, and then the very next year, they were like, "Oh, hey, you remember those cool little heart statues mm -hmm. you had to play this event for? Now you can just buy them for yeah, five thousand creds a piece." And so everybody had like a hundred of them, and I was like, What's... "Yep, good job for doing you, it." You know the one that I'm actually super happy about. Is actually the quick steal event. So the, mm. the the mini conclave event, which was one oh, weekend. Yeah. yeah. Which was I'm pretty sure the weekend before or two weekends before the Valentine's Day one. And it's an amazing little pedestal thing, which is just constantly firing off electricity. Yeah. And like Yeah, it didn't fucking come back. <laughs> right. And well, that's the thing. It will. It will no, some way or another. Yes, no. it will. Nah. I thought that about the Rift Sigil. It came nah. back easily to obtain. Like, but nah. like it's it's fine if it comes back, but not like like two weeks later. And that was that was yeah. that was like the Optical Fandle. Two weeks later, it's back. And I'm like, wait, wait, right. what? But that's that's the point. Is like the the urgency 
mm-hmm. and the exclusivity of farming and mm-hmm. putting the time in to get the thing the first time around, it, it, it doesn't feel necessary the quicker things come back. So for to your point, let's do the night wave things like everybody who put in time to get all the wolf stuff, go all the way to rank 30 to get the armor, um, all, you know what I mean? Farmed it to get the sled, whatever, whatever else is currently available. I haven't, mm-hmm. like I said, I haven't looked at the intermission yet, but like if it's back already, that means like, well, well now it's like, okay, when, when night wave series three comes out, it's like, eh, if I hit rank 30, sure. No problem. Mm-hmm. If I miss the stuff, it's, It'll it'll be back in in three weeks. Yeah, three man. Weeks time. Like, like it'll be back. I don't I don't need yeah. to I don't need to I don't need to focus on it. Like I've no. got I've got Monster Hunter to play. I've got World of Warcraft to play. Like I'm gonna mm-hmm. do those. I can always get this this time limited. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like stuff yeah. anytime I want. Like it yeah. it significantly devalues um, the urgency of of the content, which which I don't I don't like. Like I'm I'm it's, one of those people on the yeah. side of the fence. That's if you were there for it you you should be able to show something off like hey like like Zeno said i've got this really cool statue that shoots lightning off i was there for it i played it how mm-hmm. did i get that i played it two years ago i was here for it and mm-hmm. somebody's like how can i get that sorry it's it's only available at that time i'm sorry like it's mm-hmm. there might be something else neat like it possibly coming out but it it's not yeah. gonna be like you missed it you know mm-hmm. so all right not a quick question how are we going to yes. fix Lanero? Dedicated right. servers and improved netcode. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> fix it. The Actually, I think Lanero like, had great potential. Like, I thought it was a fun, like, very original game thing. But, uh, yeah, it's... I think matchmaking is horrible as well. I've got a I've got a confession. I've never played Lunaro. Ooh, ooh. I, no, but to be fair though, I can appreciate that because whoever's the host has a distinct advantage over anyone else. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. No, seriously. Um, <laughs> unless you're running off one of those hosted um, servers, but it's it's so slow to set up because you need what six people. Mm-hmm. The net code struggles with. You know the the combat and everything, so you need dedicated hosting. Oh, good, good. Random yawn. Apologies. Um, but the the yeah, the biggest problem is that the the netcode is not optimized well enough for the the PvP side of things because the PvP mm-hmm. side has to be hell of a lot more accurate mm-hmm. than the PVE side. Like the right. PVE side can give you like a general location of where a player is, but not necessarily like where they're looking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It can cheat, but PvP needs so much more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I I guess that is it. I guess we're going to the end of it. Thank you so much for yep. watching. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I super appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out Big Gem on Twitch.tv slash Big Gem ID. Um, YouTube, I think it's the same, Big Gem ID. Um, make sure you check out these highlights of this framecast on YouTube.com slash Casino Galleon. If you want to see it, uh, it will be out in its entirety tomorrow on YouTube.com slash Post Malone Games. And as always, we stream this here on Twitch.tv slash Misha Postma. Um, Jim, I hope you had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, guys.